Gone are the days when superhero films were a boys only club. By Chelsea Hirsch say, hello, to Adele's new leading man, Rich Paul. The sports agent and Jay-Z protege was spotted with the British singer at Game 5 of the NBA Finals in July 2021, two months after teasing in a New Yorker profile that they had been, hanging out. After their first public outing made waves on social media, a source confirmed to Page Six, they are, definitely, dating. Here's everything to know about the man who stole Adele's heart. He's a big-time sports agent. Paul's agency, Clutch Sports Group, is a part of United Talent Agency and represents LeBron James, Ben Simmons, John Wall and Anthony Davis, among other NBA players. He launched the agency in 2012, with Forbes reporting that Clutch received over $1 billion in contract values and the company's football division represented two of the first three players who were drafted in 2020. He's going to be an author. Paul is penning his first memoir, Lucky Me, for Rock Lit 101, the publishing division of Jay-Z's Rock Nation, The Hollywood Reporter announced in March 2021. He is set to write about his childhood in Cleveland and the lessons he's learned during his rose to prominence. Lucky Me, is more than my story, Paul told the outlet. Lucky Me, is the story of every young black man who grew up like me. 2021's, Black Widow, sees Natasha Romanoff, Scarlett Johansson, front and center at last in her solo MCU movie, supported by a cast of standout female characters such as Yelena Belova, Florence Pugh, and Rachel Weisz's Melina Vostokov, aka Iron Maiden. Black Widow, joins the MCU's Captain Marvel, 2019, and the DC's Wonder Woman, 2017, Wonder Woman 1984, 2020, and Birds of Prey, 2020, in the current collection of female-led comic book movies. So far, these films have been met with mixed responses from fans and critics. Birds of Prey didn't perform as well as expected at the box office, despite receiving positive reviews from critics. I want to use my story to uplift and inspire those who lived this and educate those who didn't. He added, I cannot tell you what it means to partner with my friend and mentor Jay-Z on this project. Lucky Me was the name of the book before I even spoke with Jay because his music was my life's soundtrack. He wanted to be an athlete. Paul told The New Yorker in June 2021 that he definitely wanted to be an athlete, growing up and played basketball and football. However, he said that while his heart is big, he was small in size, so he switched passions to become an entrepreneur and businessman who studies players' behavior. Paul eventually began selling sports jerseys and met his first client, James, in 2002 while waiting for a flight to Atlanta. The duo began working together, and the rest is history. He had a rough childhood. Paul's mother, Peaches, battled drug abuse, forcing him to live with his grandmother and a great-uncle growing up. I was never really angry, but I was definitely protective, and I was definitely sad in a lot of ways, he told The New Yorker. Because, as a kid, you see other kids and their experience with their parents, and you want the same. When Paul was in college at the University of Akron, his father was diagnosed with intestinal cancer. While it could be argued that the film's female-led cast contributed to this, another reason, Birds of Prey, proved unpopular with fans was its deviation from the comic books. In the comics, the Birds of Prey are a team of female superheroes famously founded by Barbara Gordon aka Batgirl, Oracle. He dropped out of school after his father, Rich Sr., died weeks later. I always wanted to work, he said. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is a great character, but shoehorning her into the team whilst omitting Barbara put a lot of hardcore fans off from the beginning. The answer to this problem is simple, however. But I still probably would have finished school if my father was alive. Harley is already well known for being in another all-girl group in DC Comics, a group that many fans have been anticipating seeing on the big screen for years. If Harley returns to the DCEU after James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, 2021, then she should bring these two DC anti-heroines with her. Gotham City Sirens In June 2009, DC Comics released, Gotham City Sirens, number one starring Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn. Created by Paul Dini and Gylam March, the first issue sees Poison Ivy save Catwoman from a second-rate thug named Bone Blaster, who takes Selina Kyle off guard with his sonic gloves. Selina, still recovering from having her heart cut out in the Heart of Hush series, yes, really, decides to ally with Ivy. The two return to Ivy's lair, really the Riddler's lair, who Ivy subdues with pheromones, where they meet Harley Quinn. Harley, Ivy and Selina decide to team up. I never wanted to let him down. James told the publication that he believed Paul's childhood actually helped him in the business world as an adult. 
A lot of these kids that are being brought into these situations and being drafted, they are first generation moneymakers, they are from the inner city, they are from either single parent households or from two parent households, but they are from what we call the hood, the NBA star said. They move into an abandoned animal shelter and gradually become friends as they each balance their dual identities. And Rich and I are from that as well, so he can relate to these kids. Gotham City Sirens explores their friendship whilst maintaining an edge with its morally ambiguous characters. The Sirens part ways in number 26, but their time together changes them. Selina protects Ivy and Harley, and distracts Batman so they can escape their final confrontation. Gotham City Sirens featured many great scenes and storylines during its run from 2009 to 2011. In number 5 and number 6, Harley and the Sirens fight Gaggy aka Gagsworth A. There is nothing they've seen that he hasn't seen, so he is able to have real conversations with them. He has children. Paul has three children but has never been married, according to The New Yorker. Adele, for her part, finalized her divorce from Simon Konecki in March 2021. Gagsworthy, Joker's original henchman and former star of Haley's Circus, before the Flying Graysons ousted him. Number 15 explores Ivy's origins briefly when she is possessed by an alien plant. Talia Al Ghul and Zatanna show up in number 17, and Harley breaks into Arkham Asylum in number 20 to kill the Joker. Any of these moments would make for movie highlights if the sirens were brought to the big screen. More Margot Robbie, more Harley Quinn after the character's years of popularity in Batman's comics and video games, Margot Robbie first brought Harley Quinn to life on the big screen in 2016's Suicide Squad. The third installment in the DCEU proved to be controversial with fans and critics. Many criticized Suicide Squad for its underwhelming plot and rapid editing, and the film holds a low score on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic. Despite the controversy, Suicide Squad has its bright spots. She first filed paperwork to end their marriage in September 2019 after splitting that April. Margot Robbie's performance as Harley Quinn was met with praise. The exes share a son, Angelo. Her character returned for a quasi-solo movie in 2020's Birds of Prey, and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn, where she forms a DC girl gang with Black Canary, Journey Smollett Bell, The Huntress, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Renee Montoya, Rosie Perez, and Cassandra Kane, Ella J. Bosco. Harley will return again for James Gunn's sequel, Soft Reboot, The Suicide Squad, hitting theaters in the UK on July 30, 2021 and US theaters on August 6, 2021. After that, who knows? So far, little is known about that character's long-term fate. Harley could come back for a solo movie. But bringing Poison Ivy and Catwoman with her could be better. What fans want many fans expressed skepticism for, Birds of Prey, from the beginning, stating their preference for a Gotham City Sirens movie instead of mixing Harley with another girl gang. Warner Brothers didn't listen the first time, but if Zack Snyder's Justice League proved anything, it's that the DCEU executives aren't opposed to hearing the fans out from time to time. The fans aren't the only ones who want to bring the sirens to the big screen. Margot Robbie has confirmed she definitely would be interested in making a Gotham City Sirens movie, particularly in regards to her relationship with Poison Ivy. Gotham City Sirens was pitched to Warner Brothers as a spin-off Harley Quinn project, though they opted for Birds of Prey first. A potential GCS film was tentatively announced with Suicide Squad, director David Ayer loosely attached, though that plan seems to have been scrapped now. As of now, the plans for Gotham City Sirens, the movie are on hold. This could, and should, change. With fans making their preference for Harley to appear with the Sirens clear, this DCEU project would have a ton of momentum going into production, generating enough interest and fan discussion to propel it to the top of the box office this time. Stick to the comics there is no need to deviate from the source material as directly as Birds of Prey did, should Gotham City Sirens get the go-ahead from Warner Brothers. The comics contain plenty of misadventures for Margot Robbie and company to work with. Highlights from the comic series include Poison Ivy saving Harley from the Joker in number 4, as well as Harley returning home to face her family for Christmas in number 7, only to realize she truly wants to spend the holidays with her best friends, Ivy and Selina, instead. Other highlights include Catwoman fighting her sister, Maggie Kyle, in number 13. Maggie aka Sister Zero is possessed by an entity claiming to be an angel. Already believing Selina to be evil, Maggie goes after her sister with her newfound superpowers, bringing Harley Quinn under her control as well. Maggie eventually relents, but the events leave both sisters shaken.
The comics culminate with Harley breaking into Arkham Asylum in number 20, before the sirens come to blows, reconcile, sort of, and go their separate ways in number 26. A faithful film adaptation could follow this blueprint, beginning with the sirens coming together and ending with them leaving Gotham, and each other. Keeping the scope small and sticking to the comics could earn back the trust of diehard fans following, Bird of Prey's, deviation from DC's comics. Introduce Ivy and Harley's romance a Gotham City Sirens movie would be the perfect way to introduce one of DC's most popular LGBTQ couples to the mainstream. Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn's relationship began in Batman, the animated series, during the 1993 episode, Harley and Ivy. The two team up and pull off a series of heists on Gotham's men's clubs. After that, the duo become best friends, with Ivy often encouraging Harley to leave the Joker. Harley and Ivy eventually become a couple during 2013's, Harley Quinn, series, and share a kiss during number 25. The two have a passionate and polyamorous relationship in the comics. Other mediums have also explored their feelings for each other. Notably the DC Universe, HBO Max adult animated series, Harley Quinn. Gotham City Sirens, addresses Ivy and Harley's romantic relationship as well. In number 24, Harley alludes to Ivy's feelings for her, stunning her fellow siren, before leaving Ivy for the Joker. A film version of this should flip the script and have Harley choose Ivy over Mr. J. This would be a great moment of empowerment for Harley, as well as putting the DCEU on a new level of diversity and representation, contemporary with the MCU's Loki coming out as bisexual during his Disney Plus series. A new Catwoman for future DCEU films so far, Selena Kyle has yet to make her debut in DC's Extended Universe. Fans could see her show up outside of Matt Reeves' 2022 standalone, The Batman, film, where she will be played by Zoe Kravitz. Catwoman is one of DC's most popular characters. If the DCEU decides to go in the multiverse direction, then Kravitz's Selena Kyle, and Robert Pattinson's Batman, could cross over to the main DCEU timeline or Warner Brothers could introduce a new Catwoman to the primary continuity. Either way, bringing Catwoman to the multi-movie franchise to star in Gotham City Sirens would be a great way to expand her character beyond Bruce Wayne's shadow. Like Black Widow in the Avengers films, Selina Kyle has only been a supporting character for the headlining hero thus far in 2012's The Dark Knight Rises and 1992's Batman Returns. Let's pretend the 2004 Halle Berry, Catwoman, film didn't happen. Gotham City Sirens, provides a perfect platform to develop Selena's character beyond what most viewers already know. If she is well received by fans and critics, Catwoman could go on to star in a solo movie, a more comic accurate solo movie, or even pair up with Batman again for a future caper. The DCEU has a lot to work with when it comes to Catwoman's character. Gotham City Sirens, is only the beginning. Develop the rogues gallery a good Batman-based movie doesn't necessarily need the caped crusader to appear. In the comics, Gotham is a thriving dark hub for countless villains, crazies and criminals. Fans caught a glimpse of Gotham's seedy underbelly with Roman Sionis, Ewan McGregor, Victor Jaws, Chris Messina, and their goons during Birds of Prey. Gotham City Sirens could develop this trend by introducing more members of Batman's rogues gallery. Many popular DC characters make an appearance throughout the Gotham City Sirens comic series. The Riddler, aka Edward Nigma, features in number 4 as a reformed private investigator who has turned his back on his former villainous self, mostly. Issue number 17 has Poison Ivy and Harley team up with Talia Al Ghul and Justice League member Zatanna to save Selina. Zatanna and Talia fight in number 19 when Zatanna realizes Talia, out of spite, tried to trick her into removing Selena's memories of Bruce with her magic. This scene on the big screen? Count us in. A film about the sirens should be about the sirens. But there's no reason DCEU can't extend their roster of characters at the same time by adapting elements from the comics. A supporting cast of Gotham's best and worst would be another great selling point for a Gotham City Sirens film adaptation. Bring in elements from DC video games The Batman, Arkham, video game series pretty much nails its depiction of the Dark Knight's adversaries and allies. Batman. Arkham Asylum, Batman. Arkham City, Batman. Arkham Origins, and Batman. Arkham Knight, feature an extensive roster of characters, including Ivy, Harley, and Selina, 
the sirens themselves. If the DCEU decides to develop Gotham's criminal underworld at some point, then bringing elements from the Arkham games to a Gotham City Sirens movie would certainly help. Too many characters could crowd the script, but including just enough to give Gotham more texture would be another box for the Sirens to tick. The DCEU already appears to be drawing inspiration from DC video games, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad trailer features Harley wearing a get-up similar to her character in the Injustice series. Continuing to reference the Injustice games and a Gotham City Sirens film adaptation would bring the different branches of DC media together for an Easter egg extravaganza. Harley goes back to her anti-heroine roots, Birds of Prey, has Harley Quinn team up with a group of heroines. A Gotham City Sirens movie should do the opposite. Establish Harley, Ivy and Catwoman as anti-heroines, not entirely irredeemable but willing to do whatever is necessary to get what they want. This complexity has followed the Sirens throughout the comics. All three have flirted with heroism, despite debuting in DC Comics as antagonists for Batman. Harley's role in The Suicide Squad is unknown currently, but it seems as though her character is continuing to tread the moral gray line, as she has since her debut. Teaming her up with a group of villains turned reluctant heroes is a great way to bridge the gap between Harley fighting with the birds of prey and Harley navigating Gotham's seedy underbelly alongside the sirens. Meanwhile, Ivy and Selina can be established as gray, nuanced characters with a similar moral compass to the clown princess of crime. More female characters The DCEU established a roster of strong female characters with Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 1984, and Birds of Prey, beating the MCU to the punch with its first female-led solo film, released before Captain Marvel hit theaters. Gotham City Sirens would expand on this, introducing more key female characters like Poison Ivy and Catwoman, and even Zatanna and Talia if Warner Brothers follow the comics. As well as continuing to broaden representation, introducing more female characters opens more doors for future DCEU projects. A cameo from Zatanna could lead to another, semi-rebooted, Justice League. Ivy and Harley could star in a solo movie if Gotham City Sirens wins fans over. Alternatively, the Sirens could go up against the Birds of Prey, putting Harley in the middle of a battle between her best friends. DC's extended universe already boasts a plethora of powerful female characters, such as Aquaman's Mera, Amber Heard, and the Amazons of the Mischera, led by Queen Hippolyta, Connie Nielsen. Adding more heroines and villainesses to the mix cements this focus on equality. Kevin Feige, president of Marvel Studios, has confirmed that more than half of the MCU's heroes going forward will be female. DC should follow suit. What all-female trio could lead the charge better than the Sirens? The Sirens vs. the Joker The Joker status in the DCEU is currently unclear. The character appears alongside Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad, where he is played by Jared Leto. Leto's gangster, tattooed version of the iconic DC villain drew mixed reactions. Absent from Birds of Prey, and with Joaquin Phoenix taking the character to new heights in 2019's Joker, the DCEU appeared to be done with Leto's clown prince of crime. But Zack Snyder's Justice League 2021 breathes new life into this version of the character, with Leto's Joker confronting Ben Affleck's Batman during the nightmare sequence. While there are no plans to restore the Snyderverse, Leto's Joker precedes it, and his story is still largely untold in the DCEU. Joker's appearance shouldn't eclipse the sirens. Bringing him back for an epic fight with Harley, Ivy and Selina continues Harley's emancipation story from Birds of Prey, while keeping the focus on the sirens. Plus, who doesn't want to see Poison Ivy using her plant powers to take on the Joker? More candidates for the Suicide Squad Another cameo in Gotham City Sirens could lay the groundwork for future DCEU installments. Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis, is synonymous with the Suicide Squad. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy have both been members of Waller's Task Force X in the comics. The DCEU could capitalize on their comic history by having Amanda Waller show up in a post credit scene to recruit the Sirens for the Suicide Squad. The potential for a Gotham City Sirens DCEU adaptation is endless. Harley Quinn has already established herself as one of the franchise's most popular characters, whereas Poison Ivy and Catwoman were popular enough to feature in earlier Batman adaptations like Batman Returns and Joel Schumacher's 1997 critically panned Batman and Robin. The members of the trio have become iconic separately in DC Comics, as well as DC's animated shows and video games. Now is the time to take advantage of their popularity and bring the sirens together on the big screen.